Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk a little bit more about consent. And in this video I want to focus on the question, why is consent such a difficult concept? Why is it so hard for some people to understand? And why is it a little bit more complex than some people make it out to be? I see a lot of people talk about consent in a way that suggests that it's a really simple concept. And I think there's some truth in this. Like the idea is, if you want to do something intimate or sexual with someone, you ask them, do you want to do this? Are you comfortable with doing this? And only if the person unambiguously says yes, is it okay for you to do something with that person. So it sounds fine and dandy. But in the real world, it's a little bit more complicated than this. I, I made a video pretty recently about the idea of dubious consent, and in that video I talk about some confounding factors like alcohol and other drugs, large age differences, and other factors that can make it so that even if the other person says yes, it might not really be full consent. And if you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend it. I want to talk about some more things in this video though, which is in inaccuracies in communication or misunderstanding in communication. Human communication is not perfect. We have verbal and nonverbal communication. And people can and do say one thing when they mean another. And I want to focus on the, the idea of saying yes when you really mean no. A lot of the dialogue focuses on the other way around, like saying no when you mean yes. And that, that's, that's an ugly topic too. But I want to talk about saying yes when you mean no. I've been in this situation a couple times where I'm, I'm being intimate with someone and I'm like, hey, are you comfortable doing this thing? And they're like, yeah. And they seem enthusiastic in the moment, and then we start doing it, and their body language makes clear that they're not comfortable. So I'm like, hey, do you want to stop? Are you really comfortable doing this? And the person's like, actually, no, I wasn't comfortable doing this, I'm not comfortable doing this, and then we stop. I want to make clear, if you're in a situation like this, I don't necessarily think that you or the other person did something wrong. Like, I don't think you necessarily did something wrong just because you said yes. Like, we're all doing the best we can. So if you say yes when you mean no, it's like, okay, we're all human, we have our limitations. And similarly, assuming you're doing the best you can to read the other person's signals, don't beat yourself up because you got into one of these situations. That's the first thing that I want to say. But I want to ask the question of why do we end up in these situations in the first place? And I think one of the answers lies in our social socialization. I think a lot of people are socialized not to hurt people's feelings. I actually have a video where I talk about how I think hurting someone's feelings can be a really problematic concept. And I think a lot of people struggle with saying no to people. I've talked to so many people about this, and it's also something that I personally struggle with. So someone might ask me, total non-sexual situation, someone might ask me for a favor, and it's a little bit inconvenient for me, but I still might have trouble saying no to the person. And I know so many people who've talked to me about this, and it definitely comes up in sexual situations, like people are in a relationship, or maybe they aren't even in a relationship, and they just really want to please the other person, they really want to give the other person what they want, and then they have this conflict because they might not actually want to do something. And in some situations, people will say yes to things that they don't actually want to do. And, and it creates this weirdness, because it's like, how responsible do you want to hold the other person for reading your nonverbal cues that you don't really mean what you're saying? This can get complicated when you add other factors like autism or neurodiversity that make it harder to read nonverbal cues. Um, another factor is cultural diversity. When people come from a different cultural background, if you're not speaking the same native language, um, if they're different sort of social environments that they've grown up in, that can make it harder to communicate with people too. So there are a lot of different confounding factors here. Another thing that I think feeds into all of this is 
not knowing what you want and not knowing what your boundaries are, not knowing what you're comfortable with and not comfortable with. And again, I think this is something that our society doesn't make it easy for people to figure out. A lot of the way people are raised nowadays, the school system, it provides a lot of external structure and kind of external motivators, and people aren't really given much space to figure out what they want to do of their own initiative. And because they're in this somewhat authoritarian structure where the school system is constantly telling them what they need to do, and they don't have much choice or control over it, people aren't necessarily accustomed to asserting boundaries like, hey, I don't want to do this. And sometimes people might have extensive experience with their family of trying to assert a boundary and their parents really arguing with them about it. I'm not talking about sexual things, I'm talking about all sorts of things from homework and tasks to what teenagers want to do going out with their friends and all sorts of things like that. People get into arguments about these things. So basically I think people are not being encouraged to develop the sorts of skills to figure out what they really want and get in touch with what they really want. And I think this is is bad, it's problematic for the question of consent, because say you end up in a situation where someone's like, hey, are you comfortable doing this? And you don't really know how you feel. There's one more thing here that feeds into this, and again, I think the educational system plays a role in this. I think in our society, people have a hard time saying, I don't know, and saying, I'm not sure. I also made a video about this, this ties into how people are treated in school, like basically when a teacher calls on you or when you're taking a test, you are often penalized for not having an answer. You're penalized for leaving something blank. But you're often rewarded if you guess and your guess is either correct or partly correct. So you're not rewarded for saying, I don't know. And I think in general, the system is conditioning people away from saying, I don't know, I'm not sure. You see this in how people talk about politics. Like, people seem to, to speak poorly of candidates who don't take stances on issues or take, like they'll say, you're taking a wishy-washy stance on an issue, like it's a bad thing. Maybe the person is actually showing humility. Point I'm making, our society conditions people to not say, I don't know, not say, I'm not sure. Back to that sexual situation, you're in it, you actually aren't sure how you feel, but you may feel some pressure to just say yes or no because of how you've been socially conditioned. So basically, I think all of these things feed into making consent a little bit more complex than it needs to be, ideally, and I hope I've answered this question a little bit more thoroughly, like why is consent such a difficult concept? What can we do moving forward? So I agree with a lot of the advice out there that it's important to only go forward doing something intimate with someone if you have unambiguous full consent. If you're not sure, then talk about it more, get clarification, and so on. But I think that that, just saying that is not enough. I think that we need to examine some of the really deep things in our culture. I think we need to examine the culture of treat, teaching people to be people pleasers. We need to teach people that it's okay to say no. We need to teach them how to say no, not just in sexual situations, but to all sorts of things. I think people are a little scared to do that, like parents might not want to teach their kids to say no because then they're going to start saying no to them. But this is what you have to deal with as a society. I think it's a more sustainable approach if we do this. And similarly in school, if students start saying no to their teachers, people don't necessarily want to deal with that. It makes it easier to control a classroom if you have people conditioned to say yes. But I think I really want us to change this. I also want us to teach people how to get in touch with what they really want. And lastly, I want us to be more aware of neurodiversity and cultural differences in communication. So I don't want us to just be assuming that everyone out there can read our body language as easily as we can read theirs, or each other's. 
And I don't want us to assume that everyone has the same body language, both because of neurodiversity and cultural differences. I want us to be more aware of these things. I think that addressing all of these issues can make consent a little bit easier of a concept. It's maybe never going to be super easy, but I hope this has been clarifying, and I really want us to stop talking about consent as if it's super, super simple, because I don't think it is. Yeah, that's what I have to say. If you have anything to share, uh, please comment. And as usual, if you like my video, I really love when people subscribe. I talk about just about everything, but if you like how I talk about things, consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you!